All right, so we'll start with a discussion of how we actually measure Earth's interior. And as we saw last time, uh, Earth's interior structure is differentiated, meaning that the heavier metals sunk to the center of the planet while the lighter silicate materials remained at the surface. Uh, this occurred when Earth was molten, and since then it's started to cool. Um, however, it's not, it's not completely cool. Some of these layers are completely or partially molten still. And the question I pose today is, how do we know that Earth has this differentiated structure? Um, one of the things that we can actually do is use the equation for gravity to figure out the mass of the Earth. So since the force of gravity depends on the mass of the planet, we can use, for example, the orbital characteristics of the moon uh, to figure out the overall mass of Earth. We um, can measure its radius uh, by using methods that are described in the textbook that were um, first conducted by Eratosthenes, I don't remember when, in ancient Greece. Um, and so using these, the mass and the radius, we can determine the volume of the planet and thereby its density. And what we notice is that the overall density of the planet is larger than the density of the rocks at the surface. So that must mean that there's a more dense object somewhere inside Earth, that there has to be more dense material inside than exists at the surface. So this is one reason that we were clued into the idea that this uh, differentiated structure might exist. But how do we actually map exactly what shape uh, these different layers have and whether these are solid or liquid? So to do that, we're gonna use seismic waves. So I'm just gonna play for you this quick video. Uh, and this will illustrate different seismic wave types on a slinky. So, oops. But there we go. All right, so the first one that they'll do is called a longitudinal wave or a pressure wave. And our shorthand for this is called P wave. And you can see there's a little uh, more dense region of slinky that was kind of traveling back and forth as they excited it. And now the one that we're looking at here is called a transverse wave. Um, this is also called an S wave from the German Senkrecht, I believe. So let me just play that one more time. Here's our P wave, our pressure wave, longitudinal. So this is going, uh, you know, it's a disturbance that travels through the medium in the same direction of the medium. And this one is a disturbance, the S wave is a disturbance that travels through the medium perpendicular to the direction that the wave travels. All right, so uh, here's the, you know, cartoon image of that same idea. And so these P waves, the longitudinal waves that travel in the same direction as the excitation, um, these are uh, you know, pretty common in your everyday life because sound waves are an example of this type of wave. So when you speak, then you are vibrating the air back and forth in front of your mouth in a longitudinal way. Uh, the S waves are different than this. Um, there are other waves that you might be familiar with. Light is an electromagnetic wave that is best described as a transverse wave. A and these waves are blocked by liquid, but the P waves are not blocked by liquid. So this is really important because if we can figure out how the S waves and P waves generated by earthquakes uh, travel through the earth, then we might be able to deduce its overall structure. All right, so what does that look like? Um, it's kind of like doing an ultrasound of the planet, right? We're sending waves through it and measuring what comes out at different locations in order to map the inside. And so uh, this is kind of a messy cartoon, so I'll walk you through it. Um, here we're saying that there's an earthquake generated over here at the very left-hand side of the planet. And the blue lines are the P waves that are being sent out. So they will travel in sort of these arcs through the different layers of the planet. Um, the P wave that can go all the way through the planet ends up on the other side. And when um, there's a difference in material properties, then it can cause the P waves to bend. And so that's why this particular wave is bent through uh, each of these material layers. All right, in contrast, we have our S waves. And so our S waves and P waves, they both travel through the mantle here. This is the outer um, most layer just under the crust. 
And so both S and P waves can travel through the mantle, but you'll notice that the outer core blocks the S waves. The outer core is absorbing these S waves. And so none of them will come through uh, to this area that's sort of in the shadow of the outer core. All right, so based on this image, what would you say that the outer core uh, material is? Solid, liquid, gaseous, can't tell. So I'm seeing most votes for B that the outer core must be liquid. And this is correct. So if the P waves can travel through liquid and solid materials, but the S waves cannot travel through liquids, then the outer core must be liquid because it blocks the S waves. Um, based on the same logic, we can't really say anything specifically about the inner core, right? Because the S waves are already blocked by the time they get to the inner core. So there are no S waves to you know, travel through it to test whether it's a liquid or a solid. So that makes the inner core a little bit more mysterious to try to figure out uh, the, you know, whether it's a solid or a liquid. Um, but it turns out that there is a way. It's a little bit more complicated, um, but sometimes a P wave um, can effectively transform into an S wave at the surface of a material if it comes in at a, at a very um, high angle. And if that um, wave is you know, scattered toward the direction of the inner core, then it can pass through the inner core. So it, you know, this requires a lot more modeling um, than this simple picture here of looking at the shadow and noticing that the S waves are blocked and thus the outer core must be liquid. Okay, but to the best of our knowledge, you know, the mantle is semi-solid. It's rocky, but it's still molten. There's a, the, an ability for the rock here to move. Um, but I would call that semi-solid. The outer core is liquid and the inner core is most likely solid based on what we know.